Well, amid a mood of celebration and triumph, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi delivered an address at the BJP headquarters in New Delhi and he touched on a range of issues from women's empowerment, caste and dynastic politics to the 2024 elections. Listen in. कि आज की इस हैट्रिक ने 24 की हैट्रिक की गारंटी दे दी है इस चुनाव में देश को जातियों में बांटने की बहुत कोशिशें हुई लेकिन मैं लगातार कह रहा था कि मेरे लिए देश में चार जातियां ही सबसे बड़ी जातियां हैं और जब मैं चार जातियों की बात करता हूं हमारी नारी शक्ति हमारी युवा शक्ति हमारे किसान और हमारे गरीब परिवार इन चार जातियों को सशक्त करने से ही देश सशक्त होने वाला है आज के जनादेश ने ये भी साबित किया है कि भ्रष्टाचार तुष्टिकरण और परिवारवाद को लेकर देश के भीतर देश के हर नागरिक के दिल में जीरो टॉलरेंस बन रही है It has been a big day for India. Let's talk about it now. Dr. Makrand Paranjpe is a professor from the Jawaharlal Nehru University. He's now joining us live from New Delhi. Professor Makrand, welcome to the program. First of all, do you agree with analysts who say that 2024 is a done deal, while others point out that a lot can still, be, can still happen and nothing is iron cast in politics, having in mind the general elections is just five to six months away. Yes, I think nothing is a done deal in Indian politics and voters are capable of surprising you even at the last moment as we've seen here in Telangana where the Congress was nowhere but within three or four months they came out right in the front and they won. But uh, this is wishful thinking. I mean as the Prime Minister himself said and you quoted him it's actually going to be a hat trick for the BJP, even at the center. At least all the signs seem to be pointing in that direction. Professor Makrand, is this election a testimony to the BJP's organizational strength? And what lessons can Congress, the opposition, learn from these polls? Yes, I think this is a magnificent tribute to the BJP's organizational strength, their determination to win, their will to power, their coordinated efforts, and frankly, the iron grip over the party of their central command, the high command. You can see that the prime minister was in Dubai at the climate summit. They were so sure that they had done their homework, they had done their last mile campaigning, that the leader could afford to just be out of the country when the victory uh, margins were uh, you know, being predicted otherwise. Uh, in the exit polls mm -hmm. in several cases, as well as the opinion polls. So the opposition, unfortunately, is in a complete disarray. Uh, the India alliance seems to be in tatters. And uh, this might be actually the uh, last blow in the coffin of that alliance because the uh, so-called allies are fighting with each other. They're not cooperating. But, you know, five months is time for them. They're pushed against the wall. And a crisis, they say, brings out the best in you. Uh, my, I think my point here would be that they should concentrate on micromanaging 
individual constituencies because you'll see in this election the margin of victory has not always been high it has been a closely fought election so if they want to make a dent they should identify constituencies where they have a chance and work unitedly there doctor i actually wanted to ask about the india alliance and the opposition's uh, fate in the coming future but you've rightly put it and you've rightly answered that I want to move on to another aspect. While the BJP managed to overcome the anti-incumbency uh, factor, even after three terms in Madhya Pradesh, the Congress was not able to overcome it in Rajasthan and Chhattisgarh. What do you make of that? Well, in Rajasthan, the answer is obvious. There was so much infighting between the chief minister, Mr. Gehlot, and Mr. Pilot, his deputy, who is a younger, quite personable, a uh, well-spoken uh, young man who appeals to a lot of people across party lines and across caste lines. But the infighting uh, was so vicious, actually. At one time, Pilot wanted to split the party and leave. Somehow he was dissuaded to stay back. And uh, in the end, the Rajasthan Congress is in tatters. Chhattisgarh is a little more complicated because the opinion polls were predicting a victory for Mr. Bhupesh Baghel, the uh, chief minister who's just had to demit office, but uh, they miscalculated, it would seem. I think there was complacency there, and the last minute uh, so-called Mahadev app scandal, corruption scandal, I think that dented uh, the image of the incumbent, uh, the last chief minister, not the incumbent. And uh, frankly, that also worked against the Telangana 10-year uh, reign of the BRS and their popular chief minister, T.R. Uh, Mr. Rao, uh, because th there were corruption charges. And I think there's been a much higher level of intolerance towards corruption today in India, what with social media and everything being out in the open. I think people feel cheated of development funds when there is corruption, and therefore they vote out parties and leaders who are perceived to be corrupt. Doctor, finally, before I let you go, I have two questions I have to ask you, and I would ask you to be brief with them, uh, brief with the responses. Let's talk about the man who represents Congress. How do the election results reflect upon the leadership of Rahul Gandhi, who has been positioning himself as an alternative to Prime Minister Narendra Modi? I doubt whether he has, or even his party, uh, advisors have positioned himself as an alternative. You know, if you want to give him the benefit of doubt, he seems like a sincere young man uh, who, in fact, is clueless about the ground realities, the hard politics that is uh, required to win power in India. And unfortunately, the dynastic tendencies of the Congress Party are unable to come up with another leadership. Uh, you know, strategy or a leadership, uh, even a team, because the Congress is still full of competent people. So unless they solve this problem, uh, I'm not sure how they're going to make headway anywhere. All right. My final question. The results are also a reflection of dynasty politics, as some analysts have pointed out. Congress losing out in the Hindi heartland and winning in Telangana. Does that have any inclination to such era or form of politics? Well, it does. As I said, Telangana shows that the Congress is still a major player all over India and can step in when there's a vacuum uh, of power and when the populace or the citizenry, citizenry is not inclined to BJP and their ideology of Hindutva. But actually, if you ask me, this election is a tribute to brand Modi. See, Prime Minister Modi has managed to project himself not just as a national leader, but as an international leader. And the common people feel that the future of India is secure with him. The economic future of India, the security of India, the global image of India, and above all, Indian self-pride and the ability to make it in this complicated world, not just to survive. So he appeals to the aspirational India the young India, and I don't think the opposition has any answer. They don't have any alternative narrative to that appeal mm -hmm. of brand India. All right. Dr. Makrant Paranjpe, thank you very much for all your insights and for talking to We On Wild is One today.
Thank you, sir. Thank you. We On is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.